What is up everyone, Joseph Buer here coming at you with another Clip Studio paint tutorial and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make an isometric grid much like the one you see right here. Isometric grids are great for creating things like uh, game art for two-dimensional top-down video games. They're also really good for creating artwork for tabletop board games and they're uh, especially good for things like for things like industrial design and architecture. And I'm going to show you how to make one today, um, one that you can uh, scale up and down and resize and move around however you want in Clip Studio Paint. And the best part about this is this is one you'll be able to use over again and again and again without having to uh, go through the steps that I'm about to show you each time you want to use an isometric grid. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing you want to do is open up a new canvas. And it can be any size you want it to be, uh, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to stick with something pretty small and basic. So I've got 100 pixels by 100 pixels and with a resolution of 100. Go ahead and click OK. Now the first thing you want to do is grab your line tool and the straight line is fine. And uh, a size of 5.0 is also fine. And just go ahead and draw a line somewhere in the middle of your canvas. It doesn't have to be perfect. And holding on to the shift key, just make sure you draw a line straight down. All right. The next thing you want to do is go into your free transform tool, which you can get by going up into the edit menu and just going underneath transform, free transform D. Or the more common way is by using the control, uh, no, no, the keyboard shortcut control D. Now, once you're in control, uh, once you've uh, in the free transform mode, what you want to do is you want to go over here to your tool properties menu. Now, this menu might be in a different place depending on, you know, how much you've customize uh, your version of Clip Studio Paint. But if you can't find this menu, uh, the best way to get to it is to come up here to Window, and it's gonna be right under here under Tool Property, and just make sure that's checked. Okay, so once we are in uh, Tool Property, the first thing we want to do is we want to rotate this at an angle. Now, the way this is going to work is whatever number we enter in right over here, uh, when we subtract that number from 90 degrees, that's going to be the, um, the measurement for the what, whatever answer we get from that, that's going to be uh, the measurement of our angle for our isometric grid. So for example, if I were to type in here uh, 60 degrees and hit enter, and if I go ahead and draw another straight line through here, the uh, angle right here is going to be 30 degrees. And, all, and that's how our isometric grid is going to be laid out. All right, so once we have um, our measurement, oh, and uh, 30 degrees is pretty standard for most isometric grids. Uh, feel free to experiment with uh, different measurements and see which one works best for you. Uh, typically, the, the higher the number of your angle, uh, the more of a top-down look you're going to get, whereas the, the smaller your number, the more of like a kind of like a straight-on look you're going to get with your grids. So once that's done, go ahead and next thing you want to do is duplicate this layer. And you can do that one of two ways. Uh, the easiest way for me is just to hold Alt on your on your keyboard and then left click and then just drag it. You can drag it in any direction. And that will make an exact duplicate of your layer. And with that selected, go ahead and uh, again, enter, hit Control T on your keyboard to enter into the free transform tool. And then right over here, just hit flip horizontal at center of rotation. And now we've got a perfect X. Next thing you want to do is go ahead and merge these two layers. So you can do that by selecting the top layer and then checking this button right here to combine with the layer below. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut Control E. All right. 
So this next part is pretty important. You want to select your marquee tool and you want to make sure it's set to the rectangle. And let's zoom in pretty close here and uh, try to uh, try to get uh, create a selection that's just on the inside of the tips of this uh, X that we've made. Uh, try to get it as close as you can. It's not going to be perfect, obviously, uh, but the closer you can get, it, the better. It looks like it is so. It looks like right here is going to be as best as I can get it. And then once that's done, go ahead and um, right here underneath your, I believe this is called the selection launcher. Yes, that is the selection launcher. So in your selection launcher, uh, there's going to be a, yes, you want to click this button right here that says clear outside selection. And that's going to give us these sharp corners on the edges of our of our X here. All right, so we're just about there. The last thing we want to do is now we want to open up our materials. And again, this is going to vary depending on uh, how much you've um, customized your version of Clip Studio Paint. So again, if you can't find your uh, materials panel, the best way is just to come here into Window and come in here and just click on any of the uh, material um, menu options. So once you've got this, you want to figure out where you want to put this material. I'm just going to select color pattern and I'm going to put it, um, let's see, I guess I, I guess you can just put it right here in color pattern. Um, or you can put it in here in pattern um, and I just put it under other. Looks like I've got two in there already that I did previously. So once you have the category selected, what you want to do is just with uh, with your with your X still selected with that marquee tool still active, you want to go ahead over here to your layer and just drag that over here into the materials. And there's our X. So the next thing you want to do is double click that and it's going to bring up this material property menu. First thing you want to do is name this. So I'm just going to call this ISO grid test free. I've done this three times, but you can name it anything you want. In fact, I would even name it based on the number of degrees your ISO grid is going to fall under. So since I've done this two times already, I'm just going to call this ISO grid 30 degrees. You want to make sure you select use for paper texture, scale up and down, and you want to select fit to scale, and you want to set this to tiling. These two can pretty much stay the same. You don't have to worry about changing those. And uh, the next thing, this isn't necessary, but you can go ahead and add in some uh, key, uh, search tags here. You can see I've got a couple here already, so I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, can I delete these? I don't think I can delete these. Maybe because these are already falling under the tag for other item. I'm not sure, but... Um, if you just want to have a a, a, a clean uh, tag search tag box, uh, another way to, to do this, I'm just going to hit OK and, and um, finish out the, the pattern. But another way to do this is if you go under over here to edit, edit and you go register material image, you can go ahead and uh, do the same thing here. Uh, so scaling, tiling, use for paper texture, uh, all materials, color pattern, pattern, other, and then you can add in your tag. So I would just add in stuff like ISO, isometric, grid, what have you, uh, just so that's easier to find. Oh, you can... No, I guess you can't. Whatever, but you get the idea. 
Anyway, so now that that's done, this should be working for us. So let's go ahead and create a new canvas. I'll just go with, uh, B4. And now we can we should just be able to drag this material in and look at that. Works perfectly. I want to make sure this is in the center of the screen. All right, so now you can uh, go ahead and drop the opacity on that, um, create a new layer, get out something like your pen tool, and uh, just start drawing. And there you have it, guys. That's how you make an isometric grid in Clip Studio Paint, one that you can use over and over again. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you. Goodbye.